everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Move Plus. This is after stage 19 of the Vuelta España, which Alberto Dainese won in, in classic Dainese fashion. He's been nowhere for two and a half weeks and he wins a sprint finish. But we are not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about stay, the aftermath of yesterday's stage 18, what Primo's Roglic said in his post-race inter- interview. We found it um, quite interesting. And it even had Johan asking some questions about his future and where he might go in the offseason. But first, let's hear from our sponsor. We've been telling you about our partners at Manscaped for some time, but we never really talk technology, right? It's like, what are, am I using here? I'm here to tell you that the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer with advanced skin safe technology uh, works at reducing nicks and cuts, which makes taking care of everything uh, a lot safer. You want to use the best technology. And uh, another part of their technological masterpiece, it has a 7,000 RPM motor multifunctional on off switch that can engage in a travel lock and a built in 4000 K LED spotlight to help you see what you're doing. And their performance package comes with things to cool you down, like the crop preserver and the crop reviver. Once you start using these products along with your manscaping, you'll get it. You'll start using them as a regular basis. You'll love it. You're actually going to love it. And the performance package 4.0, which is one of the options, caps it off with two free gifts the Manscaped boxers and the shed travel bag, which I use that travel bag for not only my Manscaped equipment, but all my other toiletries now. Bring in the fall right and get 20% off and free shipping with the code THE MOVE at manscaped.com. That's all one word, THE MOVE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code the move and as the leaves fall make sure you have it all with manscaped all right we're going to take a listen to primos roglic speaking with the cycling podcast daniel freebay after the stage i mean it's incredible uh sound bite that he caught is kind of throws uh our conversation on the move yesterday where we thought maybe they were all on the same page into a bit of question but let's listen to that interview now and then we'll get johan's thoughts on how this might reverberate around the team and then even the sport in the offseason. You never know. <laughs> uh, you got a bit of criticism yesterday for the interview. How did it make you feel when you saw the way people had reacted to the interview you gave yesterday? Yeah, I don't know. When, uh, when people said you should just be riding for SEP and you shouldn't um, have any other thoughts, any other ideas, what did you feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, everyone has uh, their own opinions. I mean, including myself, huh? Uh, so uh, I don't really care much. And in the meeting last night, so it was decided that Sepp was going to, well, hopefully win the Vuelta and everyone was going to ride for Sepp. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, our bosses uh, said in the evening uh, that uh, the GC should be the way it is. So uh, we try to keep it like that. How did you feel about that? Uh, I have my personal thoughts about it, but uh, I will work for it. <laughs> <laughs> so Johan, what are what are your first I mean he, I guess he should be applauded for not I mean he kind of kept it under wraps but not really I mean he was walking a thin line there like what's what, what do you think where can he go from here after this Well I think I think this actual quote or these two two answers of of Primos explain a lot of you know what we've been guessing you know what was going on within the team to me, it's clear that he's not happy. Um, that you know he would have wanted it differently. I mean, he is, after all, he's he's a champion. You know, he's a guy who he's a winner. Winners want to win, right? Uh, and it seems to me like he's not happy with the situation. Um, I, I kind of think if I if if I really look at what happened. Uh, in this Vuelta, but especially before the Vuelta and and in between the Tour and the Vuelta, my takeaway would be uh, Roglic has started this Vuelta not happy. Um, He prepared for the Giro and he already knew that normally he would do the, the Vuelta and try to win four times, which equals the record. Then um, I don't know whether that has been communicated to him in the off season already or not. But last stage of the tour, Jonas Vingegaard announced that he's going to go to the uh, to the Vuelta. Probably in the team that they've said, you know, listen, you're the leader to, to Primoz Roglic. You're the leader. Jonas is 
racing because we want the strongest team. Normally, he's not going to be in top shape. He's, he will race for you. You're the leader. At no point has Primoz Roglic thought that Sepp Kuss would be in red before stage 20, right? Um, so if you look at the, at, at the thing from his point of view, he came to this race to win. And then he came into he got into situations where Sepp went in the breakaway. Uh, of course, Jumbo's not gonna chase that. On the contrary, they had four riders in the break, so three of them emptied themselves to put Sepp in, uh, you know, in a good position and put the the hurt on at that point to Doc Quickstep, which was the, you know, the the, the big rival. Um, and since then, um, I think Roglic has been a little bit on the back foot. Uh, he was in second position. Uh, on the Tourmalet, the first guy to attack was Jonas Vingegaard. He had the most freedom also from the other competitors. So he went and uh, R- Roglic couldn't go. Uh, but at the end, if you look, then Sepp Kuss finally attacks. Who goes behind is Primus Roglic because he still wants to keep his chances intact against Jonas Vingegaard back then, back then, because at that point they still were thinking maybe Sepp is not going to be strong enough. If you look at stage sixteen, I think, or stage fifteen, uh, yeah, sixteen, sixteen, where Jonas Vingegaard attacks again because he was still in third place, he gets more freedom, but all of a sudden, unexpectedly, he gets a lot more time than they had expected because of the passiveness within the, the group of favorites. Who goes behind Jonas Vingegaard? It's again Primoz Roglic. So uh, at that point, I think, you know, he started to see, well, you know, if Sepp Kuss stays, he's probably fine with it. But, you know, if Jonas Vingegaard starts keeping, getting this time back, then it's not going to, it's not Sepp who's going to win. And it's not me. It's going to be him. And and so, um I mean, that, that's just me thinking out loud, right? I mean, just put, trying to put certain things together and, and who knows what they've said in the bus and who's, who knows what's going on. You know, when I see the interaction between the guys after the finish, I cannot help but see that Primos is, you know, he's there, he's friendly, but he's, he's cold. He's not happy. He's not, you know, he's not very extrovert with his with his you know no celebration the other day on on the on the Angliru. um and i personally think it's more i'm not going to say it's it's bad but there's some kind of competition or some friction going on between jonas and primos uh that's what i think and um and yeah i mean now i mean i was surprised to hear this quote from him yesterday saying hey i have my own thoughts about it um you know, that's kind of saying without saying, I, mean, I don't agree with this, which to me is a bit disappointing because, uh, you know, it's Sepkus and he, uh, you, uh, Primoz owes a lot to Sepkus. And then on the other hand, if you put yourself in his situation, you know, he's not getting any younger, right? And the new generation is coming and very fast. And he knows that every Grand Tour he's going to start, it's going to be more and more difficult. So, of course, you want to win Grand Tours. Um, I cannot help but think, Spencer, that this is kind of the warm-up towards Primoz looking for another team next year, even if he still has a contract. You know, because if you think, uh, if he still wants to have a shot at the tour, he needs to change teams. There's no way he can have a shot at the tour if he if he stays on Jumbo because now it's established Jonas is the strongest rider. He's the leader. Uh, the, the, you know, if you, if Primos goes to the tour, it's to be the second leader in case something happens with Jonas. And I don't think that at this point in his career, Primos Roglic wants to be in that situation. That's that's what I think. Well, yes, I, I think you're right. And then to defend Primos a little bit here. Obviously, I don't totally understand him saying that after stage night or sorry, stage 18, because what was the plan? What you're going to drop Sepp Kuss and gain a minute on that climb at that point? I think it's just it is what it is. Sepp Kuss gained so much time in that breakaway back on stage six. And really, the big problem is Remco. If Remco doesn't crap out like he did, that's that's why they put Sepp Kuss in the breakaway. They didn't send him up here up there expecting no one yeah. to be at their level and there really to be no challengers like they. 
it was a different situation back then. But once that happened, you know, the die was cast. Like there's no gaining. I don't think he can gain back a minute on Sepkus at this point. He probably just should have kept his mouth shut. But in his defense, go back to like July 15th. He's thinking, I'm preparing for this Vuelta and I will win a record tying Vuelta. And I deserve this because I was basically chased out of the tour team. There was no space for him at the tour. Stage 20, the Markstein, the Markstein, remember this? The cl- that final second to last day, Jonas Vindigo walks off the team bus and says, I'm going to the Vuelta, baby. And Sepp <laughs> Cruz is coming with me. And he like, Primo's must have been thinking, what the heck is going on here? Like, what? Why? Yeah. What? What is this? This was completely unnecessary. It's cool for them because they sweep the podium, but you would feel a little bit betrayed. And then the way the, the race played out, if you go back to – the Angerulu, I'm sure he was just thinking, I, I'm in amazing shape. The guy is in maybe the best shape I've ever seen him in. You know, he's he's knocked for his climbing ability sometimes. I don't totally buy that, but let's just say he's not, just pretend that he's not a great climber. Well, he was probably the strongest rider, if not equally strong, as Sepp Kuss on the Tourmalet on stage 13. Yeah. And then he wins the hardest climb probably of the year. Mm. So and did and did a great and did a great time trial. Great think, time trial. I think this is probably the first. I mean, and he's not going to win it, but this is the first Vuelta that he didn't have a weak moment. No, it's you the know, best the Vuelta other, he's ever ridden. Yeah, all the other all the other times he had some kind of sometimes a bad day or you know a weak moment where he lost time. He never lost time actually with real racing. He lost time because. Being a good teammate. So, Sepp Kuss got in the break and then Jonas got two times in the break. So, I mean, I can, on the one hand, I can understand what's going on within him uh, because at the end, these guys are champions and they race to win. But, you know, to voice that, um, I mean, but he said that separately, you know, to Daniel Free, but he, he didn't say that in the official mixed zone uh interviews where all the press is he said that like you know on a, on a, somewhere separate <laughs> yeah uh, and no one um, will hear this right right daniel <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah i mean uh, it's it's uh, listen i i personally think that he's gonna look for another team well and and, and you know it, now that we're talking about this if that's the case i can only see one place where he can go and that's to Ineos. Because Ineos, in my opinion, let's assume that everything stays the same at Ineos. Yeah, that the talks about them merging with Sudar Quick Step. I personally think that's that's not not gonna happen anymore. Um, but so Ineos, they need to do something. They need they need someone. And it's also, in my opinion, the only team that if they want, they can make it happen. Let's say, you know, I think if I have to take a guess, Primoz is probably, his salary is probably somewhere three and a half, four million at this point. So it's like what domestiques make on Ineos. Who who can come up with this? Plus, of course, if it happens, Jumbo would definitely not let it happen for free. So let's say, I mean, just just a rough guess. Okay, you know what? Listen, okay, Primoz is not happy. Uh, let we, we let him go. We save four million, but you have to pay two million also as a buyout it's a six million euro benefit operation for jumbo uh and ineos get their rider that they want to you know to be competitive again in the grand tours and he also is, he, i think it's a great i, I think it, they should do it i mean i don't know the relationship personally between Jonas and primos but just professionally it doesn't seem like this is tenable mm-hmm. like why would they be able to coexist they're probably two of the three strongest Tour de France racers in the world. Yeah. Shouldn't well, they I mean, both be competing for that? It is. I mean, at some point, it, it makes sense if Primoz wants to have a go at the Tour. If he doesn't, then he's perfect where he is. You know, if he wants to keep, try, I mean, win another Giro, win another Vuelta, hey, that's the best place he can be. But, you know, the Tour is the Tour, you know, and he won the Vuelta three times. Now he won the Giro. He still, in my opinion, wants to have a go at the tour. And then, you know, to, to, to finish this, this topic, Spencer, I would like to add that, you know, at no point have I actually seen Jonas Vingegaard do something against the team interest. Uh, and I think especially the last few stages, he made it very clear by his way of racing that he absolutely wanted Sepkus to win the Vuelta. He was the guy who was pacing uh, yesterday uh, on the climb. 
at the end, you know, he didn't really insist. He just, you know, he lost a few more seconds just to make sure that, you know, the eight seconds, nothing happens there. That, you know, instead of eight, it's 17 now. So it's better in, in case there's a guy. So I think we have to applaud Jonas Vingegaard for really playing the game, the team interest. Uh, and I haven't seen that from Primos. Primos on the Angli Rue, he never looked back and he just went. And and the fact that Jonas stayed on the wheel was, in my opinion, to make sure that Primos didn't win the Gio- the Vuelta. <laughs> that's, I, think that's- so. I think so too. And it's almost like two boys who have been like doing something bad to young kids. And it's like one is like, well, I was just following the other. <laughs> and then that's what sitting up yesterday almost signals where it's like, I mean, he showed a lot. Like, I don't have any appetite for this win. I was yeah. just in the wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. No, I think personally, you know, we, that Jonas is, you know, he comes across and, you know, he's sometimes, you know, titled as being cold and not being uh, very friendly. But but from what I hear within the team, he's actually a really good guy, a really good teammate. And and I think he really, he really wants Sepkus to win this Vuelta. Um, Primo's probably also, but he would ra- he would have preferred to win himself. Yeah, and I can completely understand that. I think he got blindsided by this. I don't... And I'm happy Sep won, but it's not totally fair. It's really not what he yet. was sold. He hasn't won yet. True, but, true. But, you know... So just to press you on one detail before we go. So there's two years left on his deal at Yumbo. Let's assume it's 4 million euros a year. Like, does he... Can he just slap down 8 million euros on Richard Pluge's desk tomorrow and say, I'm gone and then go find a new team. Or does that not, is that not exactly how that works? What do you mean? Like, could he just pay the remaining balance? Oh, of his no, that's not contract? the way it works. Oh, no, 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 that's not the way it works. That would be a $16 million operation for Richard Pluge. If he just lays 8 billion there. But so you because can't it, just it's buy. Eight, it's, eight, it's 8 million. You don't have to pay. And on top of that, you get 8 million. That's 16 yeah. million. No, well, that's so, not no, that's not the way it works. I mean, for I, th- I, I personally think it's there's nothing foreseen in the contract, but you know, at some point you start to consider, hey, you know, how healthy is this situation? You know, and then on top of that, if this is a super expensive rider, and say, okay, let's find a solution. Let's sit down with you know Primos and his agent and say, okay, you have you have a possibility to go. Okay, you want to go to Ineos? Okay, fine. Primos will for sure go there for the same money. And then let's negotiate some kind of compensation for them to let him go. It will be, you know, it won't be the two years contract. First of all, as for now, the 4 million for 2025, they don't have it because they don't have the sponsor for 2025 yet. At least as far as, you know, maybe maybe they're going to communicate, you know, at the end of this Vuelta that they have a new sponsor. That would probably be, you know, the right time to do it. Uh, and, you know, and the Dutch, the, the Plugge and his communication team, they're really good at communicating, like when it matters, they don't follow, you know, the emotion of the press and the fans and the social media. They are, you know, they're really structured. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if the last day, uh, at the Vuelta, they announce a new sponsor. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'm looking at the Ineos roster for 2024. This is not complete. I'm sure things are are signed that we don't know about, but they have 15 riders under contract. That's not enough, by the way. And they have zero. Let's assume Carlos Rodriguez is with them. They have zero yeah, riders is. that could win the tour next year. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. And they maybe have one rider that could podium a single grand tour. That's not good either for a team of that caliber. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if this, if we're back here doing a move plus in November emergency podcast primos just went to any house i would actually be surprised if that doesn't happen it is really strange also that there's only 15 riders uh, that actually makes me a little rethinking reconsidering that you know that potential merger well, they also them. do stuff they they could have like deals signed under the table that we don't yeah, know about yeah 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 you know I'm, I'm just saying that that merger wouldn't happen with sudok quickstep and and ineos because so that quick step keeps announcing new riders. You know, today they announced yeah. a new rider again. Last week, two more. Of course, other riders left, but um, I, I think you know they would have close to forty riders now if they would have to merge both both teams, and that's obviously um, 
you know, a problem. But then, you know, I've heard somewhere a little bird told me that they're, they're apparent, there's apparently a project registered at the UCI of that merger with 30 well, something riders. Maybe so, it's um, Enios plus another team. That's not quick step. No, 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 no. It would be you don't quick think step. so? It would be quick step. They, they want Remco. <laughs> now imagine this Remco and Primo's in the same team. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then we're back to the same thing. I mean, this is where oh, the whole thing falls apart. But yeah. judging from what Primo saw from Remco, he might not view him as a threat at the tour next year. I, that's also a possibility. No, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We, we're just we're just thinking out loud. We don't have any information. It's just, you know. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting enough to, you know, to have a debate about Primoz's reaction after yesterday's stage. Uh, I, I agree. And I, I mean, I think he's fit enough. He's shown that he's fit enough that I think he should be going for the overall win at the tour next year. I think fans would win. The sport would win. I hope they can make it happen. And thanks, Johan, for sharing your thoughts. And we'll probably be back. Um, again before this is done <laughs> okay thanks Spencer speak soon alright bye